Hi, my name is Josh, and I'm here to talk to you today about Designing with Power, drawing parallels between design pedagogy and writing workshops to empower students and democratize design. Often situated in art departments, college design educators can learn more from their English department creative writing colleagues. Writing pedagogy centers on the writing workshop model. Its methods, mindsets, and tools empower writing students and democratize who can become a writer. As a design educator who has a background in art studios and writing workshops, I discovered that the writing workshop model transfers into the, the design classroom, empowering students and democratizing who can become a designer. As modeled in, in the classic book Writing with Power by UMass Amherst Professor Emeritus of English, Peter Elbow, the writing workshop empowers students by providing relief from the solitary experience of writing to a social and enjoyable one, creating safety and sharing, finding authentic voice, and avoiding the dangerous method, getting it right the first time. The dangerous method is painstaking work. You can kind of think of the rock climber Alex Hanold, who climbed El Capitan in Yosemite um, through a lot of pre-planning, and then, of course, can't afford to make a mistake because he is doing this free solo. Um, that is a dangerous method recommended only for experts. Elbow explains how the writing workshop democratizes the experience of writing and who can consider themselves a writer through empiricism. This is the empiricism of lived experience, collective and, in and individual, and you can play many roles in this process of writing. By sharing your work with people also working on the same set of prompts or challenges, you learn how other people experience the writing process and how they experience your work. This isn't the analytical empiricism of conventional schooling, but rather what the poet Goethe called tender empiricism, the ability to let yourself be vulnerable to change based on the experiences you gather and what you observe. Overall, you're holding off on being the judge until the end. Uh, the slide deck shows a workshop I held experimenting with tender empiricism um, brought to kind of an art and design context. Uh, and I'm happy to talk about this with you at the conference. In verbal and visual thinking modes, you're planning and improvising to grow an idea from a seed concept to reality. While we might go back and forth between planning and improvising intuitively, Peter Elbow recommends creating a plan for non-planning to have a better plan. While formal plans and frameworks create structure for unclear, conceptual work, non-planning has a role too, to create surprises, discoveries, and emergent ideas. Writing workshops have recently grappled with how to become more inclusive in developing student agency and voice. And they've also pioneered assessment methods that create a workshop role for the educator, the contract grade and the narrative self-assessment. Um, these are tools to democratize uh, the writing workshop and the assessment part of it. And I have used them in my design classes now, and I'm happy to share those materials uh, with you during the conference. The methods um, that we've used uh, in my design courses are like levers to induce different mindsets um, during the design process. In a course I have called Visual Language, where students role play being art directors and UX designers, we've, we've used the following methods from Writing with Power, which work like levers to induce varied writerly mindsets. Uh, free writing, direct writing and quick revising, open-ended writing, loop writing, metaphors, poetry is no big deal, and the cut and paste collage. One objection that um, you might have to uh, introducing a writing workshop framework into a design class isn't cost because the materials are all vintage. They're not expensive technologies. By cost, we might mean our most precious asset, time. But fortunately, most of these methods can be done in 10 to 30 minute sprints. Uh, this model is a double diamond model, open, explore, and close, which I learned from my design professor as an undergrad, Dave Gray. Uh, people might know this as a double diamond model, uh, where you open up an idea in a generative way, uh, and then you close it in a reductive and refining way, and then in between you explore. And these writing methods roughly map to these three phases of the design process quite well. Uh, we use a parallel of free writing um, in my classes where, that open up with icebreakers. 
Elbow notes that here we learn to write without thinking. These icebreakers tend to create work that makes the process transparent, and the work is coherent with an energy that can even harness resistance. Elbow likens this to hands spinning clay on a wheel. The direct writing and quick revising uh, process is used when you have a really direct goal in mind and you're keeping that purpose in mind all the way through the process. Um, so I really recommend uh, using this method uh, for kind of a mini um, workshop that emulates a bigger project that you might have in class. Um, so if you have a whole toolkit of kind of design materials for students to work with, with a really specific creative brief, that is a good parallel to direct writing. Um, basically, you divide your time in half between um, the generative phase and then uh, the revising phase. And um, revising can be like a collage where you then kind of move the materials around, arrange them in different ways, much like a collager does. Um, so this is actually from my data visualization course where I introduce students to a toolkit of charts and illustrations about penguins. And then they have a design dash to do this kind of direct designing process and then quick revising. Open-ended writing uh, is a process where you let ideas emerge from making. Peter Elbow describes a process of free writing followed by a sentence summarizing the writing, followed by free writing about the summary sentence. Over time, ideas often change in mood and mode, and they become more compact. We have a parallel to this when we want to evolve our ideas using the verbal visual waddle, a method by Dan Rome. We also use some of the 13 methods adapted from the loop writing process, which attempts to get the best out of the purposeful mm -hmm. direct writing process and the improvisational open-ended writing process. We can use the loop in situations where students need to create conceptual work and they might feel bored or disconnected with the concept. On the voyage out of the loop, the point is to get lost. By getting lost, students can see the topic with fresh eyes and return to it with raw material that can energize what could have been dull and vacuous work. These methods include the instant version, which you see here. Uh, this is a big picture sketch, even before doing a time intensive a final design. Uh, loop writing also involves uh, experimenting with creating portraits and scenes from wordy paragraphs uh, and the narrative thinking and story. So this is a business school case study, very dry kind of material to work with where the students pre-visualize portraits and scenes. Loop writing involves um, um, taking a, a dry re research report and turning it into a story that has narrative thinking in it. Students also apply that narrative thinking to their own work through self-assessments and portfolios. Uh, metaphors is another thing we explore in our class uh, and uh, is used in this kind of exploratory way to reframe ideas and challenges. Uh, poetry is no big deal. Um, is basically predicated on the idea of creating a framework or a problem to solve uh, when you're trying to write poetry rather than directly trying to write great poetry. Uh, this has a great parallel to storyboarding. Uh, we use haiku and combine it with graphic design, which was an observation made by uh, the artist Seth that comics are poetry plus graphic design. Um, here students uh, focus on some formal problems to solve with uh, some attainable go goals and pleasure involved in creating these little haiku poems. We then um, use that framework and apply it toward uh, making storyboards and comics for a variety of uh, purposes, including UX design. Um, the cut and paste editing and collage process closes out um, a design project. Um, and basically the idea here is to uh, take the materials you've already generated, move them around, you might loop back to make something new, but you're really trying to maintain the coherence and energy of the earlier sketches. And that becomes a primary topic in our class. Taken together, these methods create mindsets that balance creative thinking with critical thinking. Elbow suggests that each mode can enhance the other rather than undermine it. Uh, in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities, but in the expert's mind, there are few. So the main lesson here is as college design educators, we need to empower students to use sketching confidently in their personal, public, and professional lives. Stepping away from the computer, um, students can really discover their authentic voice and find safety uh, in sharing their work 
and get the tender empiricism of lived experience. And I look forward to talking about this more to you at the conference. Thank you.